when we were in Korea, that's when uh, Lee Wan Pyo. Oh, uh, oh my God. Spinner Rooney from Booker. The promoter there, Jerry, told Booker to teach him how to do the Spinner Rooney, <laughs> and he stole it from him. <laughs> <laughs> and he started doing it. <laughs> I Booker. Did. Go ahead. So that so the spin Rooney come up, come about way before WWE days in right because yeah. way, tell, tell us about the origination I I I, I was doing some research on on you. on you and I saw you took a clothesline from one of the signers or somebody and you you did the spin Rooney out yeah. of it and all actually, of a sudden uh, actually, was born. let me tell you how the spin Rooney really became uh, a part of you know, my, my stick. And I really realized it, it had a whole lot of power. Um, just that one move. Um, my brother and I, we made our debut in the global wrestling federation and we we're working, uh, these two guys, uh, man, what was their names? I can't remember. I don't know. I don't know why I can't remember these guys' names. Um, but, um, it was an eye opening experience. Um, I'm, I grew up in Texas. I was born in Louisiana um, and I never dealt with racism a whole lot coming up as a kid or anything like that. Of course, I, I knew about it. Of course, I saw it. Of course, it was there in my face, um, but I, I just it just never had hit me like it had hit me um, on this night. Uh, our debut in, in Dallas, Texas, and just a 250 mile ride from Houston. Uh, and I was like, wow, it seemed like I was in a, in a different country being in the sportatorium. And, and my brother and I, we got called everything that night. We got called the N-word. We got called everything you could possibly name. And um, we were in the ring. My, my, my brother-in-law was taping it. He had a, one of those old camcorders and he was taping it. And uh, you could hear everybody talking and crazy and saying bad things. And I did to spit a Rooney. And this one redneck was by my brother-in-law. He said, oh my God, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and literally, it was only about 150 people in the arena that night. And from that 150 people, it grew to, you know, two to 3,000 people a week. And everybody in that arena was Ebony experience, Ebony experience. They had become huge fans. And I just saw how, you know, one move could change a whole people uh, to look at you a totally different way, not to look at your race, but look at your talent. And I was like, wow. And the night we left the Sportatorium on our way to WCW, the whole crowd was in the, in the, in the, in the parking lot. And, and so many people cried when we left that night. It was amazing. Wow. So that's what that's what the spin and Rooney taught me, man. It just taught me the power of, you know, um, don't fight back, you know, sometimes with your hands. You know, just go out and uh, deliver, you know, and maybe that'll work. Jerry, it was unbelievable. By the time I got there, it was shortly after uh, Booker and Stevie Ray debuted. Those guys were over like like three birds of the Von Erics. I mean, they, they drew the houses. You know, we, I don't know what the sport term held, 2,500, 3,000, but it was full. And when the wow. Ebony Experience come out, hey, well, that place was it was like a free, it was like a free birds. I mean, the place was absolutely rocking. Those guys, those guys it, threw money. It really was unbelievable. I mean, I, I never really realized, you know, um, you know what we had until we had it. And um, those fans at the Sportatorium, I tell you, man, um, I go back and I look at some of those matches, uh, some of those global tapes, and uh, I go, wow, man, it's amazing that we we created something there, and and it, it lasted, it lasted, you know, until this day right now. Seriously.